Hello again, I am Blunty. This is a wireless controller for the Nintendo Switch. It is called the Easy SMX Game Controller Gamepad Joypad Remote Joystick for N Nintendo Switch Console Support Switch Pro and Windows 7, 8, 9, 10. It, it, it's got a very long description on Amazon <laughs> to try and get as much as search juice as possible. But it's one of those third-party controllers for the Switch, which means uh, usually one of a couple of things. Firstly, it uh, is missing NFC support, so it doesn't have Amiibo support, uh, and it is missing motion controller support, so any game that you need to do this kind of waggly stuff in, you can't use it for, but it does have rumble, and it does have all the other features that a proper Nintendo Switch controller has. It even has a turbo button, if you're kind of a uh, weak-willed, pussy-mouthed kind of gamer that needs a turbo button. It's pretty old school, really. What it does offer, though, is a traditional controller, a pro-style controller, as opposed to the Joy-Con controllers for your Nintendo Switch at a significantly reduced price than the official pro controller, which is this beastie, of course. Well, that's a bit of a clean, doesn't it? Should have wiped that off before I put it on camera. I use it a lot. Uh, this is $29.99. This, this is significantly more than $29.99. Um, so what are the compromises? Well, I don't like the triggers. The, these triggers here, they're all they're all spongy. There's no click to it. And as we all know, the uh, triggers on the actual switch, uh, they're not analog. They're just, they just got a clicky. You got a soft click to it. You don't have that. That's mushy. Uh, the shoulder buttons are a bit mushy too. I mean, they've got a nice little click to them, but they're just a bit spongier than I like, uh, as is the D-pad. Just a bit spongier than I like. Everything else is actually quite superb, especially for a controller at this price point. If you're wondering about that blue ring, if you hold down the two... Uh, triggers there and that and go up and down on the d-pad you can actually change that to a few different color uh, not colors uh, a few different levels of brightness uh, but that your your controller indicator is always uh, as bright it just has one setting on that and it is a translucent case so the glow sort of piles through it a little bit whether or not you like that is completely up to you I kind of like it it's it's kind of old school third-party controller. Yeah, I haven't seen this in a controller for a while, but you know, rock kicking it old school. The thumb pads are nice. They've got about the same travel uh, and everything as the official controllers do. The dead space on it is, well, it's, it's pretty good. Um, everyone has their own different taste, but it's not too big, not too little as far as I'm concerned. The springiness on the thumbsticks feels about right as well. It's uh, a little bit tighter than the official controller is, but I kind of actually like that. I like a little tension in the thumb pads there. The buttons, um, they, they feel pretty good, actually. They feel pretty damn good. The D-pad is a little bit mushier than I like it. Playing arcade games, old-school Nintendo games on this thing is not the pleasure it is on the clickier D-pad there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not as clicky or as solid feeling as the D-pad on the official Pro Controller, but it is certainly good enough for games that don't use this as primarily directional control, but, you know, just activating health potions or changing your weapon, crap like that. Tried it out in a series of different games, Minecraft and Dauntless, Enter the Gungeon, uh, some sort of old school NES stuff as well to try and get a sort of a, a variety of different control schemes under my thumb with it. Uh, and I've been pretty happy with how it feels. I mean, it's not as good as the Nintendo Pro Controller, but then again, what would you expect it to be for 30 bucks? Um, the battery in it is a 6,000 milliamp hour lithium battery. Charge time is about three hours, and they say it'll go for about six to eight hours on a full charge. The vibration on board is pretty good, actually, and you do have a way to control the strength of the vibration from the controller itself. Again, it's a button combination. I forget what it is now, but it's in the manual. Um, but yeah, it does have the dual vibration motors. You can kind of just see them through the plastic there, um, and they feel fine. I mean, they feel fine. It does have a, a textured grip, and you might have seen there on the back there, and that feels pretty good too. I quite like that. There's nothing wrong with that. It does sit in the hand quite nicely. It feels very comfortable. It's the right sort of shape and weight. It is a little bit lighter than the actual Pro Controller, because the Pro Controller has a few more bells and whistles in there, I guess. Um, but it's still a pretty good weight. It's uh, let, me, let me grab an Xbox controller. Yeah, it's a bit wider than that as well. How about... Yeah, a bit lighter than that as well. So it's a bit lighter than all the standard controllers. But it doesn't feel flimsy. It doesn't feel too light. It sits in the hand quite nicely. It doesn't sort of creak or groan. It doesn't twist. It, you know, it's put together nice and strongly. I've got no complaints about the general build quality or the feel of it. Um, it is also compatible with Windows and Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Uh, but I believe you have to have it connected via USB for that to work. I don't think it works wirelessly with those. At least that's what the manual suggests. 
And sure enough, connected to the PC via the USB cable, it works perfectly well and identifies as an Xbox controller, so it will work natively with whatever software you are running. I did connect this wirelessly via Bluetooth. I got it to connect easily via Bluetooth. It shows up as a pro controller. So one would assume uh, whatever software you can use to make a regular Switch Pro controller work on a PC. Uh, I don't know what it's called. I've never tried it myself, never needed to, because I've got tons of controllers for the PC, you know, the Xbox controllers. But if you need to do that, uh, it seems like this will work exactly the same way as a regular Pro Controller will do. Or indeed, if you're happy to just to have it cabled, it works seamlessly and natively as an Xbox controller hooked right up to your PC. The same will be true hooked right up to your Xbox uh, 360 or Xbox One. Uh, same uh, interface, basically. So there you are. The only thing I don't like about how it looks is the, the font they use on the, on the buttons there that... Uh, I don't know, I don't like that ABXY stuff. Just just go for a regular font. Not that you're looking at those much, but yeah. Interestingly enough, the, the, the picture they've got up on Amazon shows these buttons backlit as well. Instead of a green, red, uh, blue, and sort of an orangey color, as far as I can tell on the on the screen. They, they, they don't light up, though. I'm not sure whether that's, you know, there's a, there's a picture of a different model they made for the Xbox or something, or they took out the lights because it was chewing up too much battery, or... But yeah, don't, don't be fooled by the Amazon thing. These, as far as I can configure out, don't light up. I certainly can't find any mention of those. <coughs> Hang on a second. I just saw something on the uh, Amazon page that I didn't see in the manual. Apparently, if we long press the left and right buttons up here. No. Oh, there they go. Hey, they do light up. How about that? Not mentioned at all in the manual, but if you long press on the L and R buttons, boom, they light up. So I take back what I said before about the Nintendo, the uh, Amazon listing being deceptive. I don't know why they're off by default, and I don't know why it's not mentioned in the manual how to turn them on. It might be a battery thing. Uh, presumably, long press, turn them back off again. Wait for it. There we go. Hey! I'm going to leave them on. I quite like them on, actually. That's about it's five, seven seconds, something. There you go. Now, you can, now, at least you can see the font a little bit better now. Let's get some focus there. There we go. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't love the font they've used there. Everything else, though, 100% satisfactory. There is no reason I can't recommend this as a very decent controller, especially for the price you pay. Normally, when you get 30 buck controllers like these, they're, well, they're kind of crappy, aren't they? Have you ever used one? Heads up in the down, in the down below. Leave, leave a comment if you've ever used a $29 controller before and went, you know what? Uh, I wish I'd got the big one. I wish I got the proper one. I wish I bought the properly branded one. I don't think that'll happen with this. That's actually surprisingly good. So. And there's not much else to say. Easy SMX game controller for Nintendo Switch Pro Style controller, 30 bucks. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a secondary Pro controller or if you're looking for a backup to this, that, you know, you've, you've lost this or you broke it somehow or whatever, or you just don't have the budget for a Pro controller, you just want to get something nice and sort of inexpensive, then yeah, I can absolutely recommend this. No complaints about it whatsoever. Again, not as good as the actual native Pro Controller from Nintendo themselves, uh, mainly down to the shoulder buttons and the D-pad being a little bit spongier than I like them, uh, and of course the missing features if you care about Amiibo, uh, and if you care about motion control stuff, uh, you want to go for the official controller, but as I keep saying, for, for a secondary D-pad, for a sibling, for a mate, for those multiplayer games, yeah, there is no reason not to spend 30 bucks on this, in my opinion. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.